Welcome to Dr. Ponics, where we talk about everything that is going wrong with our aquaponics system. So it has been very difficult to get tilapia. I don't think it's usually the case, but everyone we've tried to get a hold of or gotten a hold of have been very busy. I don't know if tilapia would solve our problem, but at this point we've been cycling our system for so long that different deficiencies are starting to pop up. Initially, our fishless cycling kit came with seaweed, which supplemented some of our other nutrients uh, besides the nitrates, which we were getting from our system microbes. Now that we've been going for so long, some of the things we've needed to add have been iron, potassium, calcium, magnesium, as well as sulfur and phosphorus. We ha we've added these in the form of soluble ionic compounds that have provided these ions either on their own or in some other polyatomic form. We've been adding iron in the form of iron chelate. Nate's story of Bright Iagrotech has been our resource as to amounts. The general usage in a system like this is two milligrams a liter every two to three weeks. So we've been adding that much on those intervals. Our calculations are approximate, but since we have around 1,000 liters in the system, this equates to, to roughly two grams every two to three weeks. We have been measuring the iron chelate on a scale, dissolving it in warm water, and then adding it mainly to the grow beds because that is where it's needed. Currently, potassium is being added to our system in the form of potassium carbonate. We got this to help buffer our system and if necessary have been dissolving small amounts at a time of either this or calcium carbonate in warm water and then adding it to our tank and sump. We've shifted more to small amounts of potassium carbonate to correct hardness issues as it is more soluble in water compared to calcium carbonate. We haven't had to yet, but if we needed to raise the pH, this is what we would use as well. We've been applying calcium and magnesium as needed in the form of a full year spray. We have this general hydroponics CalMag from some of our original hydroponics projects and have dissolved a small amount in a spray bottle. We apply this solution directly to the plants in the grow beds. Other things that may be needed are phosphorus and sulfur. When adjusting our hardness, we've been adding some phosphorus in the form of phosphoric acid to bring the pH down. We do have some Epsom salt or magnesium sulfate as well, which gives us a soluble form of sulfate if we need to address this need for sulfur in the future. Our journey doesn't end there, as the other day we noticed a spider mite invasion that needed to be corrected. At first, we thought it was some type of nutrient deficiency, but it was very obvious on closer inspection that these were bugs. Being in a public school leaves a lot of possibilities for where they came from, so we used this as a chance to focus more on treatment options to help guide us in the future. Right now, we've cleaned what we could off by hand, rinsed what we could very well under the sink, and applied neem oil. Neem oil contains as that Azitaractin, which is a natural insecticide and helps to repel the mites and also messes with their reproduction. This compound doesn't just affect mites either, as it has been shown to affect over 200 different species of insects. We mixed around 2.5 mils into a liter of water with a small amount of mild dish soap. The dish soap is needed to tie the neem oil to the water as it's not soluble in water on its own. We put this into a spray bottle and have been applying this to the plants in our grow beds. We're carefully watching the progress of this application and if needed, may need to change our application method. Because it messes with reproduction and growth, it's likely gonna take a bit in order to determine whether it's working or not. In order to be more proactive in our pest control moving forward, we have some sticky bug strips and are looking at the feasibility of incorporating ladybugs or other beneficial insects into our system. On a more positive note, we finally made some arrangements to pick up some tilapia. Yeah! After kind of getting the runaround from a supplier for over a month, we reached out to the University of Lethbridge and they've been extremely helpful. In our next aquaponics video, we're going to be documenting the process involved in transporting fish into our system, so make sure you're subscribed so you can catch it as soon as it is up. We also have been making steady progress with our climate battery planning for our passive solar greenhouse, so that will be coming in future videos as well. Thanks for learning along with us at Awkward Aquaponics. Awkward.